Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire. And once again, I'm working in collaboration with Chip Theory Games to make gear lock guides for you. The time has come to do Tink. So Tink is small, he's unassuming, he's very handy. So when his bots come into play, it's not just Tink anymore, but his mechanical posse, capable of moving further and doing more damage as if they are extensions of Tink himself. Bots can run out of battery power, but they do not experience status effects like bleed, stun, poison, weaken, terrify, or fatigue. And it's very convenient for Tink to hide behind them in a pinch. As usual, we've got all of Tink's stuff out. So we have his gear lock mat, his dice. These chips are an optional add-on to make his bots look nicer, and I'll show you how to use them during this video. We have his reference sheet, and of course we have a battle mat where he's set up with an orc and then here is Tink. Actually, where Tink goes on the battle mat is more variable than expected because Tink is melee ranged. So basically what that means is that he can come in to a fighting position on either a melee or a ranged spot. But by and large, when Tink attacks just as a basic attack, he's going to need to be adjacent to his target and he's going to attack in the melee style. So just to repeat, by being melee ranged, Tink has more options in terms of where he deploys, but he's still essentially a melee fighter and you should treat him as such. Tink is gonna start with two dice on his gear lock mat. And these are two of his robotics dice. As you can see, Tink is gonna start with build 1.0 and spider bot 1.0. These go with his innate ability, which is bot builder. And Tink's entire bot system is gonna be the main focus of this video. So you can play him with confidence. So let's start by putting his dice out. So build 1.0 is die number six, and you'll put it in the six slot. And you also have spider bots 1.0, which is die number 13, and that'll go in the 13 spot on your gear lock mat. Tink on his own is a little bit squishy, but these bots are gonna really power him up once you know how to use them. We're gonna go into extreme detail about this because I think this is the hardest thing about playing Tink. But essentially he has two professions that work together so closely that they're intertwined. You have the accessorizer, which are accessories that you can put onto his bots. And then you have his robotics profession where you have a couple of different bots he can deploy. And then an additional build die that gives you more build options for the second bot that you put out. And then we're gonna go look at his third profession, which is mechanist. And then we'll look at his consumables. I think the clearest way to do this might be to just detail a couple of Tink turns and talk about when he is allowed to do things. And then we'll go into detail about what all the accessories actually are, because I don't want to overload you with information now when there's basic stuff to be learned. That said, we'll probably pop a couple of accessories in here just to kind of show you how that works with the build die. We'll go into detail about what they do after we talk about bot deployment. So different steps related to deploying Tink's bots happen at different points during the turn. At the start of battle, Tink's innate ability, which is Bot Builder, allows him to go ahead and roll his build die once for free. So when you roll the build die, you're going to get some kind of die face that has an arrow pointing to one or more of the accessory slots on the gear lock mat. So as you can see, depending on what face you roll, you're going to have arrows that point in different directions at different accessories. The other thing is that when you roll it, let's say this is the die face we rolled, I could choose to place it in the slot this way, so pointing up and down, or I could choose to place it this way, going side to side, but once you've placed the die here, you're stuck with the choice that you've made unless you spend a dex to re-roll this die during the die roll phase of one of Tink's turns. So you get an initial roll of your build die, but in order to change it, you're gonna need to spend dexterity and roll it along with your other dice. And what build 1.0 is going to allow you to do is essentially use attachments when you deploy a bot. So let's say that we have number five, the prodder out, and we also have armor plating out. And let's say that we also have the firing arm. What this particular build die orientation would allow me to do is take the prodder. If when I rolled it, I'd choose to orient it this way, I would have access to armor plating and the firing arm but not to the prodder. So you're never gonna have access to everything all at once. You're going to have to use this build die to tell you what you have access to. And again, if you don't like your options, you're able to reroll. So it's not so bad, but you don't wanna be spending too much dex and too much time trying to make this work. The next bot related activities happen at the start of Tink's turn. 
So if at the start of Tink's turn, you do not have a bot in your prep area, then Tink at that point, at the start of turn, has the option to place a bot in the prep area. So this is why we start with Spider Bot 1.0. So there's always a bot that you can start with. In order to prep a bot, you're going to put the bot die here in the prep area, and you're also going to place its HP with it. So if you look a little closer at this die, the bot is gonna have a few key stats on it that we'll talk about. The heart on the bottom left, in this case four, is the HP. The sword on the bottom right tells you how much auto attack the bot is going to have. And then this wrench up here on the left side it tells you how many attachments a bot can have. So we know that Spiderbot 1.0 can take up to two attachments. And then this teal one is the starting battery power that Spiderbot 1.0 is gonna begin with for battle. You can choose to spend dexterity to tick that battery count up, and we'll talk about why that might be important, but that's the starting battery power, and you need to spend that battery to activate your bot on the battle map. So if this is the bot that we're choosing to prep, we'll put the die here, we'll put its four starting HP here, and then if you have this sort of cosmetic chip that makes everything look a little nicer, I can put the spider bot's 1.0 chip right here on top, and then put the die on top of that. So now this bot is prepped. Further details for how to handle the bot at what phases during Tink's turn are actually on the back of his reference sheet, but we're gonna talk through them together. Now that we have decided to prep this bot, the other thing that you can do during start of turn is, as we mentioned, tick the battery up on our bot. So if we wanna do that, we're gonna to have to spend a dexterity in order to tick the bot up by one on its battery. You can do this during start of turn for as many turns as you want to hold the bot here, but you're gonna to wanna to get one out quickly because Tink can't just sit over here by himself very effectively. You want to get his bots out very quickly. I typically like to get a bot out on turn one. This is especially crucial if you're playing Tink solo. As you'll notice here on his reference sheet, the difficulty for co-op's only two, so not too bad. But if you're playing solo, Tink is a level four difficulty because he just has a lot going on and he's very vulnerable when he doesn't have his bots. So during start of turn, we can prep a bot for free. We can spend a dex to tick its battery up. One of the rules for bot prep is that we will have access to more bots in the future. However, there can only be one bot in the prep area at a time. There can also only be one bot on the battle mat at a time. So you can't just stack all the bots up everywhere. You have to have one on the mat, one in prep. So that was all what happens at start of turn. If you want to deploy a bot, you're going to do that on Tink's move turn. So during Tink's movement phase, and this can be before or after Tink himself moves, he can deploy the bot from his prep area and it costs him one more dex to do that. So let's say that Tink, this is Tink's turn. He's already spent one dexterity to take our battery up. He might spend another one to move. And then he can spend yet one more to actually deploy the bot. So when Tink deploys a bot, he can do it in an adjacent space to himself or he can do it diagonally. So we could put his bot anywhere except for right here on top of the baddie during this deployment. So let's say that Tink really does want to deploy his bot. He can, before or after his movement, so this would be after, grab that bot, put it in a spot of his choosing. Let's say that he wants it here. And this is also the moment where you're gonna choose attachments. So we're gonna look at our build die. We're gonna decide which attachments we want. We can have up to two. So let's say we're absolutely gonna take the firing arm and the armor plating as our attachments. And then at that point, you're also going to exhaust the build die. So your build die is now exhausted for the duration of battle. And from this point, once you've deployed your bot, the bot and Tink are sharing a turn. They move not as one, because the bot can go in its own direction according to Tink's commands, but they're moving on the same turn and they're attacking on the same turn, even if their movement directions and targets are different. So Tink is not only sharing his turn with his bot, he's also sharing his dex. So in order for the bot to move, that's gonna cost Tink dex. Also, in order for the bot to roll its attachments, that will cost dex for Tink as well. So what that means is that your attachments are available because we built them with our bot. However, that we are not necessarily gonna roll them every time, because it's gonna cost Tink Dex to do it and he may decide that that's not actually what he wants to do with a limited dexterity pool. So Dex is maybe something you wanna think about building up when you are playing Tink because you don't wanna end up in a situation where you just don't have enough and you can't get enough done on your turns. 
Because in this sample turn, Tink would already only have one dex left, and he might choose to roll a defense die or something in order to protect himself. However, Tink's dex is actually not the only resource that you need in order to activate your bot. Your bot cannot move, it cannot auto attack, it cannot use attachments, it cannot do anything unless it is activated. And to activate it, you have to tick down the battery power, which is why at the start of your turn, you might choose to spend dex to tick up the battery power because it gives your bot more time with you on the battle mat. So if we wanted to activate this bot this turn, Tink actually wouldn't have to spend any more dex for it to auto attack, but we would have to take the battery down in order for it to activate. So if you take the battery down from two to one, this bot can auto attack even if it doesn't move or do anything that costs Tink Dex because that's what that sword in the bottom right means, that's its auto attack. So even if we did not choose to roll one of our attachment dice, we could in fact just boop, take a life off of our troll youngin just from the auto attack. So again, the bot is working off of multiple counters and resources. In order to move or to roll attachments, it needs Tink's dex. In order to activate at all, so that's before moving or rolling attachments or doing an auto attack, it has to take its battery power down by one. You can also just choose to let a bot sit for a turn and not take down the battery power. It can still be attacked by enemies and maybe you just want it there as kind of like a dummy bot to attract attention while you go off and do something else. So you also do have that option for as long as your bot has health. Essentially, these bots will sit here until they are killed. So if you wanted to put another bot out on the battle mat, you actually could not until this one was gone. And also, a special note, if Tink is KO'd and he's not currently active on the battle mat, then you also can't activate the bots. They'll just sit there. They can, they can get beat up by baddies, but they can't actually do anything without Tink to operate them. So that's kind of an overview of how to get a bot out on the mat and what happens once it's there. But what I want to do now is I want to rewind. We're going to talk through all of these dice, what they do, and then we're going to actually play a sample battle between Tink and the troll youngin so you can actually see this happen. Because I think that once you get into the rhythm of these bots, they're not bad at all, but they can be a little bit scary um, if you have never done it before and you're just not totally sure what to do. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the details of what these dice do. And then we're gonna play some sample rounds against this troll youngin so you can actually watch the bot deploy and see how it works. All right, so let's talk about our accessorizer dice. These are the accessories that the build die is telling you that you could have if you've trained them and you have them available. So yes, you get lots of accessories. It's like Claire's, but for robots. Our first accessory that we can get is the air horn. So the air horn is gonna have one double bone side and then it's going to have a bunch of sides that have a disable icon on it. So let's talk about what disabling actually means. So what does disable mean? First of all, who can it affect? So this five indicates that this disable ability can affect an, a baddie who has baddie points totaling five or fewer. So a five point baddie, a three point baddie, or a one point baddie could all be targeted with the air horn. In order to use the air horn, you're going to target an adjacent baddie. You are going to roll the die. And if you do in fact get this side and you're successful with the roll, then you can place this die on your target baddie. So if we rolled it, we would place it on the troll youngin, for example. And that would mean that all of the baddie skills are suspended until the start of Tink's next turn. In other words, you don't have to worry about that baddie's particular skills for an entire turn if you manage to use the air horn on it. And I think that that's pretty awesome. So air horn's a good attachment to have if you've got baddies with skills that scare you a little bit and you want to take away some of that scare. Attachment number two is called armor plating. And this is basically like a defense diet, but for your bot. So let's say that our spider bot 1.0 is out here and we did use armor plating on it. This would essentially act like a defense die. This die would soak up one damage. And then after it had done that, it would go back over to the prep area where it can be re-rolled. One of the really cool things about bot accessories is they don't actually exhaust. You just have to keep using decks to roll them again and again and again. So armor plating, bot defense. So up next here in slot three, we have protect mode. And protect mode has a few different die faces, starting with just a double bones, because you can't be successful every time in your protection. And then this die essentially acts as a counter. So you're going to roll this die. You're going to place it in one of your allies' active slots. And then for the next X times on the die that they are attacked, 
the bot will intercept all that damage. So if you just roll this face, the next time the ally that you choose to place this die with is attacked, then the bot will intercept all the damage they would have taken. You have a couple other faces of the one. This one face also has a heart at the bottom with the number one, and that means that when you roll it, your bot will gain an HP. So that's good if it's gonna be taking some damage. And then you can also have a result where you intercept twice and heal one HP. So when you get this result, again, it's gonna go in ally's active slot. You get your HP. So the first time your ally gets targeted, you'll take it down to one. And then the second time they get targeted, again, you'll intercept and you will just remove this from the mat. And then it'll go back here in the prep area on your mat because once again, bot accessories do not exhaust. They just come back here and you have to use decks to use them again. So that's protect mode. Our next die is prodder. Once again, you'll have a double bone space because you can't always be successful. And then you'll have this little prod symbol with a number one or two. And what the prodder allows you to do is displace a baddie and then do the amount of damage that's printed on the die. So this particular die face with a two would do two damage to the baddie. And if the space was available, it would also push him back by one. So you can't push a baddie off the battle mat and you can't push them into someone else's space. So if like the space next to the baddie is occupied, you can't prod them backwards into that space because it's already full. But if we had the bot here and we rolled the prodder, then it would do two damage to this troll and then push it back a space because that's the displace part of the prod. So that's prodder, very nice. And then let's look at alternator, which goes in slot seven. So what the alternator is supposed to do is boost your bot battery, which you absolutely need because remember, in order to activate the bot at all, you have to have battery to take down. If it's on zero, it just sits there and doesn't do anything. That's not ideal. <laughs> so um, you can have a double bones face once again, but this will take your battery up by one. And this face will both take your battery up by one and give your bot an additional HP. Probably the best face on the die takes your battery up by three and then also gives you an HP. So you can get a very serious battery boost out of this if you're using your alternator a lot and you get a good roll. So that's the alternator, it's there to boost you. The attachment in slot nine is called fifth leg. And this one's actually really interesting. Once again, it is possible to fail this roll, but uh, all the other sides are just this little symbol of a jumping bot. So what the fifth leg lets you do is leap and you can take the bot and place it on any unoccupied battle map position. So this leaping ability is really cool because you can leap anywhere on the battle mat. You can leap next to a new baddie and you can also change your target. So because you get to choose the order in which your rolled dice activate, you can do something on one end of the mat, jump across the mat, change your target, and then do something else. So the fifth leg can get your bot out of danger. It can tactically put it in a better spot and it can let you achieve more on your same turn because jumping also lets you change your target. So this one is a really cool attachment. I like getting it and making the most of it. In slot 10, we have our firing arm. And this one actually doesn't have any bone spaces. It just has a one or a two. And what this one is gonna do is it'll do damage to a non-adjacent baddie for the number that's printed on the die. So if this troll is my target, but there's some other baddie over here, I can use the firing arm to auto attack this troll, do whatever I'm gonna do. But I've also rolled the firing arm and I can pop pop, get somebody that's far away from me as well. So the firing arm is really cool. It lets you get more done on your turn. Uh, however, it does have to be against a non-adjacent baddie. So I can't use the firing arm on the troll because we're adjacent to each other. So this one is basically just for hitting an additional baddie at range only. And then here we have the Sensomatic. The Sensomatic is kind of an interesting one because the Sensomatic is essentially something that lets you scout. So the Sensomatic has no bone spaces, but it does have different totals, one, five, and we can go up to 20. And of course, these are numbers that correspond with baddie points. So what you would do with this one is you would roll it, you would place it in your locked slot alongside a bot die that you had in your prep area, so you'd never take it straight from the mat. Like we would assume that we had the spot prepped and we were maybe to do something with it, decided not to, and then we did the sensomatic instead. So we would put it up here in the lock slot. So we have a bot, we have a sensomatic die. And then after battle, at the start of each day, you can take this down to look at a baddie from the five point stack or lower. And then if you don't like what you see, you can cycle it back to the bottom of the stack. 
However, you reduce your bot's power by one each time you do it. And then once it hits zero, then you exhaust both of these locked dice and they just have fulfilled their function for now. So that is Sensomatic. So now you've had a look at what all the attachments are, you can see why they'd be pretty darn attractive. However, there's a lot of attachments, and as far as we know so far, there's only one bot and one build die. So we're gonna go down to the robotics profession to talk about the other options that you can develop as you develop Tink. In spot 14, you get the Spiderbot 2.0. So Spiderbot 2.0 is in fact very much like Spiderbot 1.0, but it's a bit better. Uh, it has a higher starting battery power, it has a higher HP, it has a higher attack, it can still only take on two attachments. So Spiderbot 2.0, lets you have access to an extra bot. And that means you also finally have enough bots to prep one, deploy it, and then get another one in your prep area started for your next turn. So a fully functioning Tink is gonna have two bots and ideally build 2.0. Build 2.0 has sides that are a lot like build 1.0, except you'll notice that instead of just pointing to specific skills, this build die gives you a range of skills that are available to you. So, Depending on which build die you're using, the other one will just go in slot 15. We could put build 2.0 here. And we could choose from any of these attachments when we deploy our bot, but none of these. So basically build 2.0 just gives you better options and just a better shot at getting the attachments that you want. So now that we've had a look at these, I'm thinking that what we should do is let's go ahead and have a little battle between Tink and this troll youngin so you can actually watch the bots deploy. It's not gonna get too extensive, but it should be enough to kind of give you a sense of rhythm. All right, so let's start off this battle properly. At the start of battle, Tink gets to use his innate ability, which is bot builder. So I get to choose a build die to roll. Let's just start off strong. So I can actually just take the build 1.0 and just put it in the 2.0 slot. You're not hurting anyone when you do that. And we're gonna roll this one. Okay, so we've got this set of options. So I have to decide how I want to orient the die, but I've got some choices. And we're just gonna pretend, even though this is totally unrealistic, that Tink just has all these dice, <laughs> but he hasn't bothered to work on his stats, which I do not recommend in real life, but th that doesn't matter. The point is to show you how this works. So we're just gonna leave it all here. So it's the start of battle. I have to choose how I wanna orient this. I'm gonna go with these attachments because it gives me access to the firing arm, the prodder and the fifth leg, all of which are pretty cool. So that's what I would like to do. So that was the beginning of battle. Now the troll youngin is gonna get to go first. One of the things that's tough about Tink is that his initiative is not super high. So you can get yourself into a little bit of trouble if you don't get moving quickly because everyone's gonna have a chance to hit you before you even get a bot out. And that's harder in solo. However, here's our Troll Youngin. He's gonna roll one attack die, one defense die. Okay, so he rolled a bone and he got us for one attack. So let's just take one damage off Tink really quick. And it's actually kind of nice that he rolled this bone because he's careless. So when he rolls a bone, it means that he hurts himself. Aw, oh, poor baby. Don't feel bad for you at all. Ha! All right, so the Troll went and now it is Tink's turn to do some stuff. So. At the start of turn, Tink gets to start prepping a bot. So let's go for broke here. I don't want Tink to get beat up any worse. Like, you know, he's only got two HP. Let's let's get business done here. So we are going to prep the Spiderbot 2.0. It has five HP. So we'll give it five. We'll give it the nice chip. Very fancy. And also at the start of turn, Tink has the option to spend a dexterity to tick up the power on this bot. So we're actually not going to do it because I want you to see what happens when they tick down. But normally I, I would probably actually choose to do that because Spiderbot 2.0 is pretty great. So that was the start of turn. Now it's Tink's move phase. So I think what I would like to do is just go ahead and deploy this bot. So Tink can deploy to any adjacent spots or diagonally. So let's just come in here right next to the troll youngin. So we're just gonna, we're gonna get aggressive right away. I'm actually, so that would have cost me one dex. So I'm at three dex left for this turn. I'm not gonna move Tink because even though he's looking a little weak, I'd actually rather just roll some defense dice and talk to you about how that works. So now that I've deployed this bot, I need to choose two attachments to go with it because that's the number of attachments I get. So let's say that I'm gonna do prodder and I don't want the firing arm. Let's do the fifth leg. 
because I don't intend to be far enough away from the troll youngin to use firing arm. So it doesn't really matter. Then I've used this build die. So I'm going to exhaust it. So now we're ready to go and we have three decks left for the rest of Tink's turn. We're absolutely going to activate this bot. So that's going to cost one battery power. So now Tink and the bot are ready to go and we can decide what we're going to do with our remaining three dice. So I think that Tink would should definitely roll defense and then let's roll one attack for Tink and let's roll prodder for the bot. And that's what we're going to roll. So let's roll these three to use up our three remaining dexterity. Okay, so Tink hits the troll youngin for one. The bot prods him for one. And then we have a bone. So we're going to put the bone up in Tink's backup plan, obviously. Um, this attack will take one off of the troll. Prodder, I'm not going to resolve just yet, because I actually want to resolve my auto attack first. So I'm going to auto attack for two. And we actually killed the troll. So as you can see, Tink isn't super hot on his own. But this bot came in with an auto attack and prodder in order to help us overcome Tink's natural weaknesses to take out the troll. If the troll had lived with prodder, he also would have been pushed back one. So that's one of the fun things about prodder is it also helps you get enemies away from Tink. He was looking a little bit weak. So I was thinking that even if we didn't roll good attack, we could push the troll back a little bit. Just a couple of other things for battle. Let's just pretend that the troll was able to revive itself and we'll play one more round with it because I don't want to make anything too complicated. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna, uh, we're just gonna continue our fight as if the troll healed, even though it didn't. So we would be back to the troll's turn. Unfortunately, he would still be about to come hit Tink. So Tink's kind of in trouble uh, because he's going to attack the weaker of the two of us. So let's hope for the best. Prodder, by the way, will come back here and let's see what this troll rolls. Okay, so fortunately the troll only hurt Tink for one, but he's got one defense. Now it's Tink's turn. Tink is looking pretty gnarly here. But we're going to go through some of the startup turn stuff with the bots so you can see. So now that we've got one bot deployed, Tink has the ability to prep another bot. So let's say that we're going to take Spider Bot 1.0. And we can set him up with some HP. We'll use our nice little chip. And then at this time, Tink could choose to spend a dex to uh, increase the power on the spider bot, but that's actually not a really good idea right now. What we need to do is take out the troll youngin. So we gotta focus all of our energy on that. So before we get going, there is one other thing I wanna say about the prep area, which is that you may have noticed that you have active attachments for a bot that's out on the battle mats in the same general space as a bot that you are prepping to maybe go into battle after this one leaves it. You have to make sure that you're keeping your prep area organized for that. So make sure that you leave your attachments here sort of at the top. So this is what you're using actively in battle right now. And then bot prep, so something you're kind of getting ready to maybe put out in battle later, will go down here. So we've not spent any decks yet. We've got four to spend. So the question is, should we move Tink or no? I think that we should move Tink over one to spend one decks to do that. And then we're gonna roll this die and we're gonna roll Tink's defense die. Just because if Tink gets KO'd, nothing happens with the bots and that would be really bad. Uh, we also need to tick the bot's power down. Now it's at zero, which we need to pay some attention to. And we're gonna roll these two dice. All right, so Tink got two defense. The bot got to prod for one. So basically the bot will auto attack for two. So this will be one, two, It'll prod for a third and knock the troll back. However, the reason I wanted to fake continue this battle is to show you one more thing, which is now that this bot is at zero battery, it's sitting here at full health, but it has no battery. And that means that we can't activate it. And we also can't just put another bot out on the battle mat because this one's technically still alive. So it just seemed important to me to show this to y'all. <laughs> because it'll help you understand why things like alternator are really important. And maybe I should have thought about that when I was doing my attachments for this bot. And it's also really important because there's a backup plan option called self-destruct. And it's something that you may want if you need to get a bot out of the way or it's weak, it's low on battery, something so that you can put another bot out. The other thing I want to point out is that right now there is no build die here. Um, if I wanted to get ready to deploy this bot, 
I would need to, during a die roll phase, roll this other build die in order for this bot to have access to attachments. So it's possible to deploy a bot with no attachments on it and you, it can just auto attack and that's fine. But if you want any of the attachments, you're going to have to use dex during your roll to roll the other build die. Before we finish talking about bots, there is one more thing to mention here, and that is what happens when a bot does get exhausted. So when it runs out of all of its health chips and it's time to remove it from the battle mat, where does it go? So what will happen is that the bot die itself will exhaust. You can't use a bot or the same bot twice during a battle. It'll exhaust just like any skill die. But what happens to the attachments is the attachments go back to your battle mat where they can then be used on a future bot build. By and large, attachments to your bots do not actually exhaust. There are a couple of exceptions. One of them is bot mod, and then you also do exhaust your Sensomatic die when that bot ticks down in your locked area. But attachments that have been used with a bot that you've exhausted and taken off the battle mat can be re returned to your gear lock mat and then used when you deploy another bot during the same battle. And those were kind of the key things I wanted to show you about bots. When in the turn do you do what? What happens in certain situations? So if it gets down to zero charge, you better find some charge somewhere. And then how do you handle deploying and prepping? So hopefully you've seen all that and you feel a lot more comfortable trying to play Tink. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up. We're gonna talk about the remainder of Tink's um, gear lock mat and about his backup plan. All right, my friends, we are in the home stretch now. We have talked about the accessorizer profession and we've talked about robotics and you've gotten a quick overview of how Tink can deploy his robots on his turn. There are only a few things left to talk about here and then we'll discuss the backup plan. So this is the mechanist profession. Tink is a mechanic. He'll need to do a couple of things on his own without his bots. And one of these is small profile, which is kind of an interesting little skill. As usual, there are a couple sides with double bones because small profile does not always work but you also have a couple of other interesting results that you can get. Hide allows you to place an untargetable effect on yourself, and this will last until the start of Tink's next turn. So basically he can go a turn where no baddie can target him, which is really good because as you can see against the Troll Youngin, Tink takes a lot of damage really fast, and he starts with a pretty low HP. So if you need a break for a round, you can use something like small profile to give Tink a smaller profile. Your other option is called hide behind, and this allows you to become untargetable if you are adjacent to another unit. So you can actually place this on another unit and be like, ha, I'm hiding behind you. And this can be another gear lock or it can be a bot. And then once you've placed this on an adjacent gear lock or bot, you are untargetable while you are adjacent to them. So if the unit moves or it gets knocked out, you exhaust this die and remove it. But this allows Tink to hide behind someone else while doing his little dirty mechanical deeds. So this is a neat way for Tink to get out of the way. Here we have Cog and Spanner, which I also like quite a bit. This die does have a couple of red bones, which means that if you roll this result, you have to use it in your backup plan. You don't have the option to just not use it and reroll later. But it's but it's also got a lovely stun effect. So this stun effect is called blunt object, and you basically place a stun on any five points or fewer baddie. So fives, threes, or ones. So basically what stun does is you place it on your target and it causes them to lose their next turn. So basically if Tink needs to get a better tempo advantage on his troll youngin opponent, he could use cog and spanner to do that. And then we have our consumables. Our first one is gizmo. And you can essentially roll this to heal a bot for the amount of HP printed on the die. So if your bot's looking a little bit beat up, you can do something about it with Gizmo. And there's another special consumable, which gives you extra bot time, which is the SpiderBot 3.0. So this one starts with higher battery power, it has better HP, it can hold to three attachments, although it still only has two auto attack. But basically this bot is awesome. And because it's a consumable, you can't just use it every single battle. You have to get it as a consumable and then deploy it when you're fighting. So get the SpiderBot 3.0, treat it like any other bot, cherish it. It's just that after a battle is over, it doesn't go back to the mat, you've consumed it. And so you have to be able to get it again using either loot or your backup plan. So those are all of Tink's dice. And let's go ahead and talk about that backup plan. Let's flip over to the back of this reference sheet here. So Tink has a really nice backup plan that makes it a lot easier to use his bots. So be using this to the max. For one bone, you can use bot mod and this either lets you heal an adjacent or diagonal bot for one HP. So it's got some healing abilities 
or you can exhaust one attachment on an adjacent or diagonal bot to attach any learned attachment. So if you don't like what your build die gave you, but you just took an attachment anyway, you can actually use bot mod to exhaust that particular attachment. Normally they don't exhaust, but in this case they do because you're modding your bot. And then you can pick any other attachment that you have learned to sub in. So this lets you make little tactical changes mid battle. And it also gives you access to attachments that you didn't get off the build die if that was frustrating for you. Two bones gives you an option. You can either do pull start or hot gasket. Pull start is awesome because it restarts an adjacent or diagonal bot to its starting battery power. So remember how when that bot ran out of battery, it was no longer able to do anything. You couldn't activate it. It just kind of sat there. Guess what? This backup plan is going to help you. You can get next to your bot, you can use pull start, and then it resets to its base battery power so you can keep it going for a little bit longer. If you don't need that right now, you can also do something called hot gasket. That lets the bot burn all adjacent units for one damage. However, it does say all adjacent units, and a gear lock is a unit, so be careful where you do that. Three bones is gonna give you self-destruct, which is another crucial part of bot management because remember, you can only have one bot on the battle mat and one bot in prep at a time. If you wanna get your bot in the prep area, out on the battle mat, and the bot that's already out there is still alive, maybe you would like to self-destruct. So using self-destruct allows the bot to hit all adjacent units for three damage, and the bot is immediately exhausted. So it comes off the battle mat, and then that gives you the space to put another one out there. So make sure that you use self-destruct at a good time, either when a bot's about to die and you just want to clear it away, or if you have a better bot that you want to use and you just need to get something out of the way. Or maybe you just need to do a bunch of damage. All of these are possible with the glories of self-destruct. For four bones, you got hammer time. That lets Tink either smash an adjacent baddie for three true damage. True damage is great or heal an adjacent or diagonal bot for three HP. So basically this is a skill that Tink himself does, not a bot. He can either do some serious damage to a baddie or he can fix a bot using his hammer at hammer time. If you get five bones and spin them, you get Spiderbot 3.0, which is of course the best consumable ever because it's an amazing bot. So if you want Spiderbot 3.0, this is one of the ways to get it. And then six will allow you to upgrade to a neat plus one. An 8 plus 1 is actually great with Tink because he still gets his bot builder ability. He rolls a build die at the start of battle, but it also allows him to put bots in his prep area and start them at one battery level higher. So you go to that teal base level and you can automatically tick it up one without spending any decks. So his bots just have more battery once he gets to his an 8 plus 1 ability. It's awesome. So overall, that is how Tink works. As for beginner build strat, the first recommendation is that you get four HP to match Tink's bot. The reason that you want your HP to match your spider bot is that a lot of baddies will choose to target the weaker units on the board out of two. So if you're weaker than your bot, your bot isn't going to do as much for you because Tink's just going to get wailed on all the time, even if he does have bots out. So you want to make sure that you are taking care of that. A deck stat of at least five is also good because you need more options. As you might have noticed, you need decks to move yourself. You need decks to move your bot. You need decks to use attachments for your bot. You need a lot of decks. And then you should switch to defense dice for more backup plan options. Because Tink's backup plan, as you might have noticed, is actually crucial. He needs it to keep his bots going. He needs it to self-destruct bots that aren't doing their job anymore. So if Tink isn't rolling bones, he's not actually able to do as much with his bot as he needs to do. So adding defense protects Tink because he's a little bit squishy and it also gives you more options with your backup plan because you're more likely to roll bones. When it comes to skills, it says start with firing arm or protect mode, depending on the style that you want to play with Tink. I like the firing arm if you're playing solo because you just really need to be able to do something about all those baddies. Then take one more accessorizer skill and then focus on robotics. If you happen to be getting KO'd often, small profile is also a good way to go. And I would say that this beginner build strat, as usual, is very good advice. And so at last, we have covered Tink. Tink is one of the more challenging gear locks to play because you have to get used to running his bots and prepping them in the right rhythm and getting the right attachments. But once you get used to him, the bots actually become second nature. He can be especially challenging in solo play if he doesn't get good initiative rolls. But once Tink's bot is out on the mat, Tink is a force to be reckoned with. So hopefully this video gave you the confidence to give Tink a try. I personally really enjoy him now that I've come to understand him a lot better. And stay tuned for more gear lock guides to come. Thank you so much for watching everyone and happy gaming.